Hey guys. So I was at Target the other day and they had the e.l.f. hot chocolate eyes palette and I had seen this on their website and wasn't going to get it but then when I was right there they had it on a display right in the front of the beauty section um, it comes in a box like this it just says hot chocolate eyes it was ten dollars the reason why I'm showing you the packaging is because it does not say it anywhere on the palette so this is what it looks like and then if you look at the back it just has like a little sticker on the back that just has numbers on it so it does not tell you the name of the palette anywhere on it so once I saw it in person I thought yeah that's that's uh it's a pretty palette but it's also very basic and you probably already have all these colors in your collection already but I don't know it was an impulse buy and for ten dollars for fifteen shadows it's a really good deal and I was curious about it so I thought let's go for it <laughs> okay so with any brand new palette that I have never used before I like to do swatches so let's see I only have four fingers um, I'm trying to figure out because it goes five across all right well let's just do four at a time then Okay, the first one you can't see because it blends right in with my skin tone. And then the gold, shimmery gold. That is the shimmery green. And that is a matte brownish orange. Okay, so the next four shades look like that. So this is the last one in the first row. That is a matte orange. And then this one is a shimmery copper I would say this is a matte tan and a matte brown I don't think I'm gonna have enough room for all these because I didn't swatch them close enough together maybe we can go over on this side Okay, so let's do the next four. Yeah, we're going to have to go over here. Okay, so a matte orange. Oh, these are like the world's worst swatches. I'll have to do that one again. Hmm. It that one is like a shimmery beige. And then we have a shimmery bronze. The shimmer's not showing up. And this is like a shimmery peach. Ooh, not too impressed with the swatches so far, you guys. But, you know, sometimes things work a lot better on the eyes than they, they do in swatches. Okay, so we only have three left. Those look like they might be the best three in the palette. That 
That's a matte brown. A shimmery deep copper. And a shimmery white that you can't see because it blends in with my skin. Alright, so none of those swatches are very impressive. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Sometimes the way they go on your eyes are totally different. Because don't forget, this is bare skin. So over a primer, it might be a different situation. So let's, let's check, try them out. Okay, when I wiped the swatches off, they were actually more pigmented than they were appearing on camera because when I tried to wipe them off, some of them were reluctant to do so. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to start with a Profusion Pointed Crease Brush. This is the ES3. And I think I'm going to start by going in with this shade right here. And they don't have names, by the way. And there's a lot of fallout or kickback. So for ten dollars, that's less than a dollar in eyeshadow. And I thought it might be fun to play with this. This is a palette I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people because it is very basic and it has all the colors that most people buy when they buy palettes. Um, I was buying a lot of very colorful palettes there for a while. So now I'm kind of swinging back the other way and getting things that are a little more wearable, we'll say. Just taking that down into the outside corner of my eyes, of my eyelids. Okay, this shade right here, I think is so pretty and I hope, I hope it works. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure about this palette yet. The the lid the uh, crease shade worked fine. By the way, I don't know if I said it or not, but I primed my eyes with Mac Painterly Paint Pot, and if you want to know any of the other products that I have on my face, it will be in the description box as always. Hmm. This is a MAC 239 shader brush. I don't know if I said that or not. Well, I know one thing. I'm making a mess of this palette because there's a lot of um, kickback and fallout and a lot of shimmer going everywhere into the palette and I have a feeling that by the time I'm finished you'd never know that I had only used this palette one time. It's going to look messy. But that's okay. I don't like palettes that 
um, are extremely pigmented and hard. Uh, I would actually prefer them to be softer because I feel like they blend easier. And I know that that might not be a popular opinion, but that's the way I feel about it. Okay, that is a pretty shade. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Let's, um, let's take a Profusion ES2 blending brush. Let's go into this matte brown down here. Okay, this one is not kicking up an abnormal amount of product. Okay, I'm going to go right in. Whoa, that one is pigmented. I'm just doing the outside corner for some definition. Wow, I wasn't expecting that based on the swatches. This is what I mean about eyeshadows are not necessarily... Um, you know, you can't really base everything around swatches, and this is a perfect example, because this one didn't swatch like this. Yeah, once you put things over a base, it's a whole nother ball game. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that for now and then go back and blend some more later. Okay, I've got two different shapes. Which one do I like better? I kind of like this one better. This one is more rounded. Okay, um, I'm going to use... I'm going to use a, a Profusion ES4 brush at this point. And I'm going to take some of that same brown. And I'm going to drag that under my lower lash line. Okay, I'm going to try to um, fix this off camera so that the shape matches the other one better. Okay, I just took a dry Q-tip and just, you know, blended, blended and sort of erased the eyeshadow to try to make it match the shape of this one here. So that's all I did. But I didn't put any makeup removal or anything on it because um, that will mess up everything that's underneath it, foundation and um, the eyeshadow primer and everything. So just use a dry Q-tip. 
Okay, um, I don't see any shadows in here that I feel would work as a highlighter with this look because there's a white, but I wouldn't necessarily put white with these colors. And then this one here, well, let's do a finger swatch with that one again. Yeah, okay, maybe that one, that one might work. Well, you know what, since I've got it on my finger already, let's see if I can do this like this, just for the application, and then maybe I can blend it out with a brush. This is a pointed crease brush. It's in AOA Studio E105. Yeah, that, that one is light enough. Okay. Well, I think I better do the other side the same way so that they will look the same when I'm done. Yeah, that is light enough. <laughs> because in the pan, it looks like sort of... Um, you know, it's a beige color, so I didn't know if that was going to be light enough. All right, now, um, I'm going to take my pinky finger and dip it into that white and just do the inner corners. Because the inner corners, I don't mind if they're white, but this part here it would have just been too light with these with these colors um okay let's take my AOA studio buttercream gel liner in pumpkin and a profusion flat precise brush this is the ES7 Let's put some of this on the waterline. Okay, I'm going to do my lashes off camera. I'm just going to curl my lashes and then I'm going to use my Milani Lash Primer. And I repurchased the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. Um, I had been using Maybelline Lash Lift, the Falsies Lash Lift. And I think this is better. The one that I had before this though didn't work that well and I think it might have been like an old one that had been sitting around or something so in other words it was old when I purchased it because this one has been blowing me away since I bought it so yeah let me just do my lashes off camera and then I'll come back okay so here's the finished look and um, I think that this palette is certainly worth ten dollars of course I haven't played with all the shades yet but this shade that I used as a highlight shade is um, kind of unique there's something different about the texture and the color of that so it isn't just like a straight up shimmery beige it's it looks like it may even have some kind of a dual chrome thing going on there but um, I didn't have any issues like applying any of the shadows or anything and um, yeah, it actually performed way better than I thought it was going to. Like I said, the colors are quite basic because you've got a lot of your um, standardized type colors in here, but 
but that one is unique and this one is unique too. It's a shimmery peach, but it looks like it's got some sort of colored reflex in it, which I can't really tell what color those reflex are, but um, it's not showing up on camera. No, when I tilt it, it doesn't do it. But in real life, this is unique and that is unique. But then you've got like a gold and a green and a white and browns and... Um, you know, a lot of the colors that you would expect, a bronze, a copper, you know. But I don't know, I think a lot of people would like this palette. And for ten bucks, um, I think it performed fine. I mean, it didn't blow me away or anything, but, but it's good. It's good. It's definitely worth ten bucks. So if you happen to be walking through Target and you see this, you might want to pick it up because... This is the kind of palette that will be good to have for the holidays. Um, you know, unless you already have a bunch of palettes already that have these shades in them. But it does have, you know, a couple of unique items with those two. So that's it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. It's free, you know. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.